would essentially see. I'll use red. I guess I'll use red for the medical pathways or the medical problems. Gout. So essentially, in gout, what you're ha what's happening is that there is essentially too much uric acid. It's being pre it's precipitating in the joints, and when it precipitates in the joints, macrophages will come by, eat it up, and cause an inflammatory pathway. The, clini the stereotypical clinical presentation is there's a big inflammation and pain in someone's big toe. They didn't they don't they think that they stubbed their toe, but they don't actually remember stubbing their toe, and this is caused by gout. What actually the treatment for gout is actually one decrease the inflammation and two to block the xanthine oxidase, which allows for which allows for more hypoxanthine and guanine, which can be secreted because they're more water soluble, which can be secreted so they can be secreted in the urine. In terms of ways this path in terms of ways this pathway can break down, so the so the the enzyme that causes that kind that allows adds fo fo a phosphate, the kinase activity, to generate IMP or GMP is a protein called hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribose transferase, P HGPRT, which is actually implicated in a couple of major diseases. When you have a downregulation or when you lack this gene, you can actually call cause something called Lish Lish 9 syndrome which is a metabolic disorder in which you're having too much degradation, not enough salvage, and this causes a rise in the levels of P PRPP. Once again, PRPP is combined with the guanine or hypoxanthine to create these two things, and then decreased levels of IMP or GMP. This decreased level and this imbalance of purines causes the clinical presentation of Lesch 9 syndrome, which is mental retardation, um, over excessive uric acid overproduction, which causes gout, and also the mental retardation and can cause such things such as self-mutilation. This is based on the presumption that purines are actually a neurotransmitter, but the fundamental mechanism is still yet unknown. Another way in which the salvage pathway for purines can go badly is if you have deficiencies in ADP, a a ADA or PMP which is the adenosine deaminase or the uh, the adenosine deaminase or the purine nucleosidase phosphorylase essentially these two nucleotides or these two amino acids or these two proteins enzymes are crucial for maintaining high levels of maintaining high levels of the nucleic acids and actually deep, uh, mutations in these two genes causes skid skid is smear is the is a it is a lack of development of the immune system which is typically what you see when you think of ideas such as a bubble boy and that then in development they lack the nucleotides and the, the, the immune system is most sensitive to this, not quite sure why, but this causes skid in which the immune system doesn't respond well and they must be protected from the environment. This is actually one of the first clinical cases or attempts to use gene therapy. This is, a, this is something that they wanted to try because the gene is very well characterized, the disease is well characterized, it's a one gene deletion or it's a one gene mutation and so if they can change one little thing in the genome, theoretically this could heal them and create and prevent this disease. But gene therapy is still actually really far because a lot of the vectors they used causes non-specific integration into, into the genome. So although they might cure the disease, it actually can cause, in some ways, it can cause um, other types of cancer and some other fairly harmful side effects. So, unfortunately, not yet. I'll add a frowny face.
in this discussion of nucleotide metabolism, there's one big important role that's being played by of by folate that I want to make sure I don't forget. Folate are the single carbon transporters single carbon transporters that are responsible for a lot of anabolic metabolism. Anabolic meanings to build up. So essentially folate is, is most crucial in cells that have a lot of turnover or requires a lot of synthesis. So this means the GI epithelial cells and hematopoietic cells in the bone marrow. Essentially folate is really important because it can be created it's really important because it's involved in the synthesis of all purines or in the de novo pathway. Once again, that uses formal folate or formal tetrahydrofolate. Whereas for the conversion of GMP to T DTTP, actually requires the use of folate as well. So essentially, the GMP is must be fo fo phosphorylated into GTP and then reduced into GTP, GTP, and then, or sorry, U, UMP, from UMP into TTP. So it must be ph phosphorylated in DUTP into U D T T P. Essentially what happens here is D U M P is d differs from D T M P by only one carbon group. And this carbon is donated by methylene tetrahydrofolate and catalyzes this reaction to so the folate it gives away this carbon and turns into dihydrofolate and this must be recycled through creation of tetrahydrofolate and then back into methylene tetrahydrofolate this reaction the reaction from di tetrahydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate is catalyzed by dihydroreductase and this is also the same enzyme that can use that can be used to generate more ditetrahydrofolate from folic acid, which is what you typically eat in uh, nutrition in vitamin supplements. Folic acid is a essential vitamin, but in our daily diet, there's actually not that much folic acid. The daily normal metabolism from natural sources comes from N-methyl tetrahydrofolate, in which another enzyme converts it into tetrahydrofolate. And this is the homocysteine methyltransferase. I'm, I'm making a point to talk about this protein, the homocysteine methyltransferase, because this all requires a vitamin cofactor, B12, which is also cobalamin and is required, essential, for this conversion to occur. When you, in anemias in which you lack either folate or B12, what you get is meg megaloblastic anemia. Megaloblastic anemia is once again created from deficiencies in folate or B12 because, once again, folate is the one carbon carriers. They're essential for synthesis of nucleotides and blood or the hematic or the, the bone marrow is a huge source of using, really requires this folate to generate new red blood cells. When they're immature, they become big and they don't work as well and then it creates this type of anemia. 
So in summary, folate, the carbon carrier, is really important in the de novo synthesis of nucleotides, even though at first glance it doesn't look like it's directly linked to the de novo nucleotide synthesis pathway. This is because it's simply a carrier for one carbon species, which is required for the synthesis of purines and thymidine. But it's not actually being used up, it's being recycled, it's a cofactor. And because of this, it's is not for at first glance because of this at first glance it's not readily apparent that folate is essential for nucleotide metabolism but it's a very crucial cofactor co for any type of anabolic metabolism